Hello, everyone. Today, I want to talk a bit about inductive definitions uh, and just a way to. This video is more to give you uh, a tutorial on how do you go from um, the mathematical notation down to the record code. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very simple function, the McCarthy 91 function that you've already seen. Uh, and I'm going to give you a few different notations of how you, you could see that uh, being specified. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how I, I would go about and implement each of these uh, notations. Again, everything would be always the same function, so uh, the, they're all equivalent. Um, so just to f one clarification is that mathematical inductive definitions, they're, they don't necessarily need to be for functions, for things that behave like functions. And what I say is, Something that behaves like function is if you give it the same parameter, uh, the output is always going to be the same, right? So if you have m of x, and if that equals some y, and the same equals some z, then x uh, y equals z for sure. So that's the definition of a function. Um, so in in mathematics, you can have the same notations to describe relations, but I'm not going to do that in this video. So now, let us look at the first function notation. And again, this M is for the McCarthy 91. So what we have here is uh, a formalism that is more similar to your, um, to your substitution function. So if you look at that, uh, it will be something like this with multiple equations, and you have an if condition on the right-hand side. Uh, and the idea is that you're always defining a function um, recursively, that has in its body a main conditional, right? So the conditions appear on the right-hand side and the returns appear on the right-hand side of the equals, uh, right? So in this case, I'm saying uh, when I'm given an n such that n is greater than 100, then I should return n minus 10. Um, and if n is smaller or equal than 100, then I should return m of m of n plus 11. So, um, the implementation of such uh, notation is very trivial. Uh, it maps really well to record. So what you see here is the conditional. The ifs appear on the conditions of, the con of this conditional. So they're the guards of each branch. And the return value is what you see uh, on the right-hand side of the equals. So this first line corresponds to this branch, and the second line corresponds to this other branch. Another way to describe a function is with this fraction notation, where you, we write the precondition above the result. Precondition here, and on the right-hand side, again, we put the result that is being returned. So, uh, very simply, you get the same code in this case, because that's the way it looks, right? So condition here will match here, and the return appears here. Same with this other branch. Branch appear, condition appears in the beginning of the branch, and then the, res, the body is going to be what you see on the right-hand side of the, of the equals. Okay. So next, um, you will note that in some... So uh, this fractional not notation is what you see in um, the evaluation function. So that's what you'll see there. But you will note that in, s in the evaluation function, you will see multiple conditions. So what do they mean? So when you see multiple conditions, uh, if it's an equals, it's just saying that you're calling it and you're assigning to some variable. So in this case, what you see is I call n plus 11 and I assign that to, e to x. And then you can use that x anywhere. So in this case, I'm going to use it in the following expression. So m of x equals y. Then I can use this y anywhere. In this case, you see I, I used it in, in the result. And the condition is still here, so you can add another condition. You can think of it as also three conditions that always hold, right? m of n plus 11 is true for any x. So m of x equals y for any y. This is always true. So there are two ways of seeing it. Um, but if you have something like this, I would actually suggest that you represent each of these equalities as a define. So if you have m of n plus 11 equals x, 
just create a define for x, and then in its result, place the expression where you're calling. Right, so this m of x equals y would match this second line here. And finally, uh, the condition appears here in the beginning, right? And finally, the result appears at the bottom because that's what's being returned. It's the last expression. So that's what's going to appear on the right hand side of this equals. Right, similarly here, n minus 10 appears here. So this is going to be very important when you're implementing the rule for uh, function calls. One thing that is important to note is that in mathematical notation, the equal sign is optional. You don't really need to use it. It's more of a convention. People are used to it. Uh, but there are other conventions really depends on the community that is using. And as you can see in um, the evaluation function, it's very customary to use the down, down arrow. So in this case, we can, I just want to show you that if we were to use M uh, with this symbol of this radio, um, that is, in, and we're going to use the infix notation, it kind of looks smaller. So the thing above here is equivalent to the thing above on below. What we're saying is that we're going to use function M as the symbol. So on the left hand side, you have the input as you have this N here. And on the right hand side, you have the output, so you have it here. So you kind of saved a few uh, things and sometimes uh, a few characters, right? We don't need the parents, we don't need the equals, we just have a single sign, single sign. So it kind of looks smaller and oftentimes it actually looks neater. Uh, you can just focus on input and output. You don't have to worry about the M parentheses and the equal and whatnot. And that's the point of it. It's really to give emphasis to what is important. And here, what is important is the input and output, not the fact that you have parentheses and an equal and whatnot. Okay, so go, again, just to recap, what you see above is what you see below, and the code will be the same. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is uh, pattern matching. And pattern matching, you've seen it. So in this case, I'm showing you uh, the implementation or the formalization of the quick sort function that you probably are aware, and maybe you've even implemented it. Um, but the way you can define it formally is with these two rules. And what it's saying is, again, this is an inductive definition. So what we're saying, we're giving the two cases, and this is a recursive definition. So in the first case is when the list is empty. And when the list is empty, you return the, the list. This is one rule. Second rule is when the list has at least one element. So this is a cons. Left hand side, you have the, the first. Uh, right hand side, you have the rest. And this colon colon is very, very use, uh, usual to represent cons. So then what it means is you're doing a pattern matching. So this is, you can see it as a conditional on top of the argument. You're saying if the argument is a cons, if the argument is empty. Okay. So it assumes that the argument has to be a list. And then what you see here in the second case, what you're going to do is you're going to call the list recursively. So for every element of the list, such that the X is smaller than P, you're going to return X. It, this part really doesn't matter because it's not useful for this course, but for the sake of completeness is here. Result is L1. You do the same for L2 and you store L1 here and L2 here. Okay. Um, and that's about it. This is how you see, um, what important, what is important here, just to recap is that we're doing a, a pattern matching. So we're looking at the structure of the terms explicitly. What this is doing is actually defining two variables, P and L, where P is the first element and L is the result of calling rest of some function of some list, right? So in racket, I have exactly the code for this function notation. And what you can see here, P is the first of L, R is the rest of L, right? So in this case, in the first case is the, the list empty. That's the case return empty. And in this case, you have the list, the input should be P colon colon R, which is the same as writing P is first, R is last. And then L1, again, because you have an equality that becomes a define. Equality becomes a define. And then this, this thing with the L1 dot P dot L2, 
That's the same as append of L1, cons, blah, blah, blah. The, the notation here for a list really doesn't matter. What I want you to focus on is on the notion of pattern matching and using defines whenever you see equals, because that's what matters for homework four and five. Okay, in the next video, we're going to introduce, uh, we're going to extend our Lambda E, our language with environments, and we're, un we're going to, our task is to add defines to it. We're going to figure out today that it's not as trivial as it seems.